All right, first off, everybody, don't boo me. I know what day it is. You know, my, my team's playing today. There's two purposes for the hat. Um, yeah, I'm a Lions fan. I won't ever deny that. But I came from the inner city of Detroit. Um, but today we're going to talk about how people that come from inner cities are people that came from nothing. You see it all the time. People always talking about, I started from the bottom, now I'm here, and all that other stuff. But we're talking about how it's so much easier for people who came from nothing to obtain financial security than from people and kids that came from families that was upper middle class affluent to obtain financial success independently of the family. Um, and I have millions of stories of people who came from affluent households, kids in that nature. And only thing they did was squandered the family's money and they never did nothing independently. And then they thought that the family's money would last forever and then they didn't keep building on the process but today we're going to focus on people that's in the inner city and talk about how it's so much easier so alex before i jump in and do all my craziness what's your thoughts on uh on that process i mean you you came from i'm not gonna say the inner city but inner city compared to detroit but it was considered the inner city compared to the uh part of town you lived in in florida so what's your thoughts on What's your thoughts yeah. on that coming from little to nothing and the yeah, ease with, of it, of making it? I'm from Tampa, um, where I came from in that area. The average income, I think, was around, still today, I think is around like twenty to $24,000. So it's a pretty poor area. Um, and at least growing up in my family, the idea was like, you can't, make money or you can't be successful unless you go to college so there's a lot of like it, i think that just comes from culture or just from generations but the ones that want to make it out they have that drive i have a cousin who he did go the college route and he's um a surgeon but i obviously didn't go the medical route or nothing but i looked back on that you know, the way I grew up during this whole process of, you know, trying to become successful because really I kind of wanted to prove to my family that there are ways out of it. Um, and we also, I also know of some family friends that, um, that have, that are really wealthy, um, but their kids were born into it and they, they don't want to do anything at all. They just want to eat up all the money yeah and and i and i see that also i mean I, I, what i noticed from kids that come from you know well off them they lack the drive and the reason why the inner city kid the kid that came from nothing is more is more likely to do it is because they had that hunger they know what nothing feels like they and the thing is for me my biggest thing is they know what nothing feels like and they still survive with nothing. So the ability to take risk, it should be way more paramount. Of course, in the hoods of Detroit, they say the only way you're going to make it out is by dribbling a basketball, throwing a football, rap songs. That's all you see. I mean, you see the corner boys, the drug dealers. They probably make some money, but they still stayed in that same vegetative vegetative state. And they just throwing rocks at the penitentiary. The only time they, they make it out the hood by going to jail, you know, or make it out the hood by getting killed. That's what they do on, on that front. But everybody else, I mean, yes, it is a crab in a barrel mentality there. But if somebody just sit back and think for a second is, look, I'm already at nothing. You know, I didn't already had my auntie, my grandma, and mom and them, uh, and cousins already put light bills in my <laughs> light bills in my name when I was two years old. Credit already bad, so you already starting at nothing. So if you start taking risk, and then the worst thing that happened with those risks is you still in the hood, you survived that. So the propensity to take risk, take risk, take risk should be higher, and a lot of them. Are higher. A lot of the people don't want to go back. I remember uh, even I left to go to the military. Just because I went to the military, that don't mean I broke that mindset of 
being in the hood. I still was, you know, spending every dollar I made and things like that. Uh, you know, still wanted to go party, club, have the nice shoes, have all the clothes. Didn't have any access to my name, but I still had that same hood mentality. And then when I started thinking about breaking that cycle, when I when I thought about breaking the cycle, it was more of uh, what do I have to lose if I don't? What do I have to lose if it don't work? And only thing I said was I would just go back to being the same normal state that I've been in the last 27 years of my life is with nothing. So I said, I'm going to go for it. I mean, of course, I started off doing the, you know, get rich quick schemes. None of that stuff worked. Trust me, people, I've tried them all. <clears throat> it don't work. Only thing that only thing it teaches you in those get rich quick scheme is to, hey, time costs money and you're going to spend a lot of money and you're going to make a lot of mistakes and you're going to do a lot of crazy things. That's what the get rich quick scheme is talking but then I started, and then somebody said to me, do you want to get rich quick or you want to get rich for sure? And then mine was just for sure. The timeline didn't matter. I just wanted to break the cycle of, you know, the nine to five grind, paycheck to paycheck, you know, stop trying to rob Peter to pay Paul, you know, not having to worry about are my lights going to stay on? You know, is the gas going to stay on? Do I, am I going to have to open the oven to warm up the house because I can't pay the gas bill? You know, things like that. Um, and then so from there, it was just, all right, I have nothing to lose. I remember I was at Wits End. I mean, when I say Wits End, I mean, it was, I was, a, you know, a couple weeks away from, hey, being on the streets. And my only option was being on the streets in Texas, moving back to Detroit or getting my act together. That's how, and I already knew it was no way I was going back to Detroit. I wasn't going back there to put my uh, tail tucked between my legs and say I didn't make it. So really the only option was live on the streets or make something happen. And then I just started focusing on it and pushing and pushing and pushing. And I had that drive. Of, I'm used to having nothing. So cutting down on expenses and eating ramen noodles and making uh living on less than I make was a concept that I'm, I was already used to. Not well, not living on less than I make, but not having nothing with the money I made already. So when I started making more income, I just kept that same mentality of, all right, I still don't have nothing. I still don't have nothing. You know, if I make $2,000 a month, oh, I only made $500 a month. I only made $700 a month. And I'm living like $700 a month is all I have. I mind tricked myself that I was back in the hood. I was I was back in the house with, with roaches running all around. And I just lived in a, a mental state that, hey, I'm going to live like I'm in poverty, but that extra income, the other side of my brain saying the extra income is going to take me out of that situation. And that was one of the driving forces. And that was the biggest driving force. I was going to say one, that was the biggest driving force to get out. And that's what, you know, gave me the insight that, you know, coming from nothing, give you more drive than the people that already have it. Alex, what you got before I go crazy and talk all day? Yeah. Um, I like your points on like, you kind of not, spoiled i guess you could say like you're used to not having nothing um i think that's what made it easy for me being able to make those sacrifices that didn't really feel like sacrifices to me um eating i'm not saying i grew up eating like slop but like eating right, right. just basic cheap food and then driving a car that had like no ac and you know duct tape side mirror according to curb <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh you know, just stuff like that. I just it didn't really bother me. I didn't I didn't really care to have to go through that or I wasn't trying to impress anybody, you know, and I didn't feel um, like embarrassed. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people, they feel embarrassed if they don't have a newer looking car or they're not able to t go out to eat with people or, you know, go out to vacations and stuff. I had friends that were like traveling all over and i didn't travel until years after you know i had already started building up our investments and stuff um so to me it was just like normal it was just you know let me stick to this living as frugal as possible until you know i can start making it and then enjoy better stuff later on but i mean truth be told i, I still got a you know a, a little car so <laughs> 
it ain't like I still got and it, yo go ahead yeah and I I remember um I remember when I first met you and then we had that uh that lunch liquid liquid lunch for me but uh lunch, lunch uh <laughs> around the corner and uh after talking to you I came home and I told my wife I said he's not worried about what other people think about I was like he got it I was like he has it because I mean me I, I rarely spend time I mean I talk to somebody you know a couple times and see where their mindset's at then I just know like no they don't have it they don't they're not ready and that's what that was one thing I talked about he's not worried about what other people think he's okay to do at least he's he's no he's 21 years old and he ain't sitting there talking about his goal is a Lamborghini his goal is to flex you know his goal is uh to buy gold chains and all that that was the first thing that stuck out and I was like he has the opportunity and the mindset to do it everybody else they they want the money but they want to flex the whole time when they're trying to get the money that's why they never get the money if you take that money that you want to flex with and start putting it towards assets then the real money is going to come that trust me the the money that you putting aside a thousand dollars a month or whatever every month if you just keep compounding that and putting that towards assets the flex money the money that you work for those assets will supersede that income and alex you talked about it on another video i mean you've been at the you've been at this for you know about four four years and now your passive income is over 50 percent of what you and your wife make combined so rel relatively it's more than what you one person in the household makes but now you're shooting for making it more than what the household in general makes and this is just four years so you you sacrifice early and then now like you said you're going on trips so everybody thinking like oh you have to live this mindset forever of just saving every dime saving every dime saving every dime you're in year four and in the last four years you've been in way more countries than me yeah i think i think um i think yeah uh but but alex always traveling now he thought that he could never travel until he got 65 or something and <laughs> now he's he on every damn continent <laughs> but that's what it takes and everybody you know everybody's still trying to Everybody's still trying to get the pay package to get to the Bahamas, and you just you pick up on the weekend. I say, Alex, where you at? Oh, oh I'm headed to Chile. What? What, what the hell? <laughs> you, you talked about it like you about to go to the Starbucks or something. I'm like, but just imagine in that <laughs> short amount of time, just see how just see how the income and the finances change. I mean, you was when we first met, you thought you couldn't travel till you was in your sixties. Now, four years later, you're traveling more than people that you know that's in their sixties. But it was just a change of the mindset. And then now those assets are giving you opportunities that you would have never had if you just work, live paycheck to paycheck, paycheck to paycheck. I mean, I know you hear people at your job talking about, oh, I want to go do this. I want to go do that. And then they saving all their nickels and dimes just to go do it. And then they probably got a trip planned out five years from now. Or you probably got mm -hmm. or you probably got the friends that came from affluent families that Oh, I'm just going I'm just gonna spend it on daddy's dime. And y'all the same age and they still spending family's money to get it done. But you see eventually they will hold the family's money and they're gonna squander it all away. So just just having that mindset of the grind will get you to where you want independently. So nobody's sitting there saying, Oh, I did this for you, I did this for you. You did it for yourself. And everybody has that opportunity to do it, but I think the people that came from nothing have a greater drive and greater push to get it done at a more expeditious rate. Exactly. With all that being said, guys, hit that like button, leave a comment down below, share this video, subscribe, and we will see you guys on the next one.